shy and a bit of a loner. He was a young man from Tassie who grew up with a loving family. At school, he was bullied and told by teachers that he was stupid. Looking at him, the last thing you would think was that he could harm anyone, but you'd be wrong. Martin Bryant is one of the world's deadliest killers. He's currently serving 35 life sentences in the psychiatric wing of Risdon Prison in Hobart. Today marks 20 years since he unleashed horror on the quiet historical town of Port Arthur and the entire country. John Caldwell brings you this special insight into the carnage Martin Bryant caused. It was the moment that rocked Australia to the very core. The Port Arthur Massacre remains one of the deadliest shootings worldwide committed by a single person. There he is, he's over there. Can't believe it. Martin Bryant opened fire at the historic site, killing 35 people. The 29-year-old man walked into one of Australia's earliest settlements on Sunday and began firing indiscriminately at dozens of men, women and children. In Australia, after a day of terror and death, a grim investigation continues today. A 29-year-old man is in custody, blamed for the deaths of nearly three dozen people. Among those killed were Walter Mikak's wife, Nanette, and two daughters, Alana and Madeline. The three-year-old was shot dead as she ran from her attacker. 20 years on, Walter lives in the vibrant town of Byron Bay on the New South Wales north coast. And it's here at the iconic lighthouse Walter remembers his family so tragically taken. What's the significance of this place for you? There's a seat just down on the other side of the, the lighthouse there where probably my favourite family sleep ever was taken. There's the four of us are sitting on the bench seat with the lighthouse in the background. There was a lot of love and a lot of fun time packed into those three and six years. Alana, six, and Madeline, just three years old, when they were killed. The morning of Port Arthur, what was the last things that you remember with the girls and Annette? I remember having a, a goodbye kiss and um, saying goodbye to the, the girls and even the night before I played football I think on the Saturday and you know and it said oh do you want to go up and have a few drinks with you know with your, your mates and I said no no I just have a quiet night I just I'm feeling a bit wrecked and I really just want to sit here with the kids. I remember going to bed that night holding Alana's hand sleeping in the trundle bed in her room just you know things like that where you, you just think what, what, was there some force saying that, that something was actually going to happen. All those foreboding thoughts rang true when Martin Bryant opened fire at the Broad Arrow Cafe. But he didn't stop there. His rampage continued through the gift shop into the car park, where he then stole a yellow Volvo, driving towards the entrance to the historic site. This is where he would come face to face with Nanette, Madeline and Alana in what would be their final moments of life. I remember being at the golf course hearing, you know, the, the, the shots. We, we were laughing, we were saying, oh, there's a reenactment happening over there. Nanette was holding her youngest Madeline, pleading with Bryant not to hurt her babies when she was shot and killed. He then turned to three-year-old Madeline, where he fired twice, eventually killing her. Alana sought cover behind a nearby tree, but Bryant, after shooting her mother and sister, turned for her. Finding Alana cowering in fear, he shot her dead. And it wasn't really until I'd gone home they weren't there. You know, I went to the front toll booth and your body obviously protects you in a situation like that but there was a car with doors open and I think four bodies sitting there on the ground and it didn't quite even register what could have happened here. If you're looking for story of courage, you know, to stand there being confronted by the gunman and to plead for your children's lives, that sustains me in a lot of ways because, you know, it's, it's the ultimate fight for the parent to look after your child, to, to just want them to survive. There were two little babies killed, shot, how one person was able to do all that, you know, that's the burning question. It was really a bit of a perfect storm where you've got someone with a grudge, you had you know, lots of money to spend, you know, motive, money, and was able to just go in and buy firearms over the counter. 
But that stopped with Brian. It was then, in the wake of unimaginable tragedy, gun laws in Australia changed forever. I'm very happy to announce that the Commonwealth and the states and territories have agreed on a uniform and much tougher approach to gun laws, which uh, will, in our view, make Australia a much safer place in which to live. 700,000 weapons were surrendered and melted down. The biggest gun buyback the world had ever seen. Will add to the overall safety and good of the Australian community. A feat enviable on a global scale. Something for Walter to be proud of. His family's death, not in vain. But have you ever thought about what you would say to the man that did this to your family if you passed him in the street? I think the, the, the ultimate thing was you've taken everything that you're ever going to take from me and I'm not going to succumb, I'm not going to back away from that tough situation or you know, where there is a possibility of this happening again. Do not take your partner for granted. Do not take your children for granted. And what would you hope Alana and Madeline would say about their dad now? <laughs> um, well, I'd like, yeah, I, look, I, I think they'd be saying, look, thanks dad for still, you know, keeping an eye out for me, that for still, ensuring that we're remembered, and we're remembered for such a great thing that we're helping other children. The sentence has been made. Let Bryant now disappear into the moor of the prison system. He'll stay there. He will be forgotten. You never use the name of the person who did this to your family. Can you tell me about why that is? From a very early point in my book, I made a stand that there's no courage in having weapons like that and walking around and doing what he did. So to have his name mentioned in the courage of the people who were in the cafe, the paramedics, the police, to Nanette, who looked him in the eye and said, look, don't hurt my children. His name doesn't deserve to be remembered anywhere near that calibre of person. 20 years on, Alana, Madeline and Nanette are remembered, along with 32 other names killed in the Port Arthur Massacre. Almost yeah. unbearable to remember, isn't it? But um, we go to Port Arthur, it's just beautiful, and there is no mention of the gunman at all, yeah. which is great. It's the way it should be.